Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to start out by giving uh, Mr. Tepper uh, a thanks of uh, gratitude on my part uh, for giving me this opportunity to uh, lead this franchise and this football team uh, for the past uh, 13 weeks. Uh, it's been a tremendous pleasure for me uh, to work with those men in that locker room and to um, sort of help steer this organization in what I consider to be uh, in the right direction, a positive finish um, on their part. And with that, I'll take your questions. As he, uh, I understand you're going to interview tomorrow. Um, can you talk about that and what your pitch will be? Well, one, one thing, David, you, you'll find some consistency with me, and that is, is that uh, I'm not going to express on anything beyond today uh, and really with the exit meeting with these players as we move, move forward. Um, so uh, I'm just going to keep that private. Guards and their their injuries. Uh, I won't know anything until the MRIs come back. Um, I think, for the most part, it's nothing serious. I hope, but uh, I don't want to confirm uh, until I really know. You just mentioned being able to lead this team at this time. As you begin to reflect, what will be the most significant moment for you, having led these men right now? I think there's several, um, but when you look at the process of what we've gone through. And as I mentioned to them, um, to deal with so many different it's, as, as you guys heard me before, uh, we don't allow it to get in the way. And uh, we had several this year. And to see how those guys are so resilient in, in their course of trying to you know, win football games and to stay focused and do the little things right, uh, that's going to be you know, what I remember. Steve, uh, you, you never want to make it about yourself, which I respect. Um, but I just want to maybe try one more time, not knowing what the future holds. If you would take this time to maybe reflect on what it means to you to be in this position, coming from Charlotte, representing West Charlotte, um, if you would maybe indulge us with, with that at this point. You, you know, um, I'm going to keep it with the players. You know, I just I, I respect those guys so much. Uh, that I think they deserve all the credit, you know, and just their uh, point of being resilient, um, just that quest of trying to do the things that I ask them to do each and every day, which really is an act of a champion, you know, be where your feet are. Let's just win the day. And all those things that we try to create and establish within a 13-week culture, uh, it happened. And uh, we saw a lot of benefits from that. So I give those guys all the credit and how they responded. Speaking of the players, I mean, you're clearly a control what you can control guy, but the players have been very <coughs> vocal about wanting you to lead them into the future. How does that make you feel knowing that they have been unshy about their endorsement for you? Well, uh, we have a great level of respect for one another. Um, as you've always heard me talk about uh, my love for them and, and how they go about their work and their business. Uh, and as you just mentioned, we're going to control what we can control and, um, you know, allow the process to, you know, take care of itself. Steve, I've asked you this before, and you've always said you're going to focus on winning the day now that there aren't any days to win, so to speak, with the season over. Do you feel like you've done enough to be the head coach here next year? Why, why do you feel there's no days to win? Well, I mean, being the season's over. The, oh, the but there, there's still days to win, you know, uh, and we're going to start with trying to finish and win this day and uh, making sure we send the guys out with the um, you know, right message, which is making sure that they take care of themselves uh, during the off season. And um, so that's where the focus is going to stay. Well, I mean, do, do you feel like you've done enough to, to, to keep the job though? Well, again, that's, that's not my call. You know, I can't, I can't say. Coach, if this is indeed your last time addressing Charlotte Media as a head coach of the Panthers, what, if any, message would you like to send to the fans? Well, I think the message was um, very relevant from the day I stood in front of you guys. And I said, for, in order for us to be able to try to accomplish what we need to accomplish, we need to go back to our old mantra, uh, which is keep pounding. And I think that's what you saw those guys do. They kept pounding throughout the process. And, uh, you know, when Sam Mills gave us that phrase, those words, uh, they still resonate. And uh, that's what we're all about. And that's what you saw those guys do. We kept pounding to the end. You know, we won our last game on the road, and we won our last game at home. So 
uh, that's a lot to build on when you look at uh, really what we've done in the past. So, um, you know, I told those guys, particularly the core guys, uh, you guys got a lot to build on going into the offseason. Steve, after your experience in Arizona, how important was this opportunity for you to lead a group of men again, as you said? And do you feel like if this is it, you will have put your best foot forward? Uh, I I can't really speculate for, for everybody else's opinion. Uh, I just try to control my own narrative. Um, it's a great opportunity for me uh, having this uh, chance to be able to lead this organization and this team, uh, as you alluded to about Arizona. Uh, I learned so much uh, from that experience, which allowed me to be able to do the things that I did here uh, within this short period of time. And uh, that's making sure that there was clean, concise clarity in everything that we're doing from day one. And uh, being able to hold everybody accountable uh, for their actions and making sure everybody had a great level of commitment and we build that trust throughout the process. So, uh, you know, making tough decisions as you do uh, in this position for, you know, um, talking about coaches changes, player changes, you know, guys leaving. Uh, they're all tough decisions, but you make those decisions for the betterment of the team. And um, that's what I was able to do throughout this process. You learned from that experience. So what did you take from that that's made you a better coach this time around? Uh, I think number one is just um, communication and uh, guys being on the same page, having a, having a staff that's going in the, in the same direction. You know, uh, it was very important for me when I got rid of uh, coaching coaches and making the change, I wasn't quick to bring guys in because I believe it's so important to have the right fit. So. Uh, the defensive coaches did a tremendous job in their quest to try to keep things together because we were, man, we were several guys down on that side of the ball, and, and those guys stepped up and did a tremendous job. So uh, I wanted to make sure that, again, we had the right people at the right position. The team presented you with a game ball yesterday. Uh, considering how this 12-13 week journey unfolded, what will you remember about that gesture and what it meant? Oh, it meant that, um, you know, we were all in it together and that we had a great level of respect for one another. So, um, you know, just as I presented to uh, Eddie as well, uh, I think, again, you just uh, that level of commitment uh, to, to try to be excellent. Uh, and I, I truly appreciate, you know, the love that I have from those guys, uh, which I know they do for me as well. And uh, so it, it's, it's been great. When you reflect back over the 13 weeks, is there one week or one game you're most proud of or you think speaks to what you were trying to accomplish? There's, there's so many. Uh, I think the first one um, was winning at home, which, you know, at that particular time, I think it was, I don't want to give false numbers, but it had been a long period of time since we had won at home. And to be able to do that in front of our fans and try to, you know, bring the excitement back at Bank of America Stadium, uh, that was very glorifying. Uh, and to do it against a guy that many consider to be the best at that uh, position. Uh, and when you look at our DNA, as, as I talk about all the time, just uh, element of finishing, you know, uh, for us to be able to uh, finish that last game the way we did yesterday, I, I thought was very impressive because uh, it took everybody in all three phases to get it done. Uh, and, you know, we did something that we haven't done uh, winning two in a row, and we talked about that leaving here with Denver and going to Seattle, um, going against a hostile crowd, 12th man, et cetera. So uh, there's several examples, man, where, where those guys in that locker room uh, really stood up and got the job done. Expanding on um, the second part of Joe's question, do you feel any sort of kind of peace or satisfaction that, that you did, no matter what happened, that you did kind of put everything out there that you wanted to put forward? as a, you know, this is who I am as a head coach this season. Yeah, I, I've always felt that peace because I'm very confident in who I am. Um, I know uh, whose I am and who's in total control. So I never waver from that. But, um, yeah, I, I it's nothing that I ask the players uh, that I'm not willing to um, do myself. And uh, so I'm always trying to be accountable, great level of commitment, trying to build that trust. Uh, so, um, 
no, I'm, I'm, I'm completely satisfied with the job that we did. Steve, Steve as you look back over the season, you know, how difficult was it to manage the quarterback situation, which is, has kind of been in flux really for a few years here, and how can you speak to how important it is to you know, have, you know, solidify that, that position? I, I think, uh, and I said these words earlier, I think it's about communication, clear, concise clarity. Uh, that's what I gave those guys. So I didn't really go to talk to, you know, PJ uh, separate. I didn't go to Baker. I didn't go to Sam. You know, we all sat down and we talked together as men do. And uh, I gave them clarity on the direction in which we we're going. Um, sometimes you don't like it, but uh, they had a great level of respect when you can come to them directly and tell them this is what's, what is going to be this particular week. Uh, and when you look at, and I tell coaches this all the time, you know, only so many guys can start. You know, and you want those guys that are disappointed and upset uh, uh, that they're not on the field. But you got to be able to handle those difficult situations, and the only way you can do that is being truthful and upfront with them. Do you think that is important moving forward is to, to solidify that position here? Uh, there's several positions. Uh, and when you talk about really trying to get to where we need to be, that uh, we need to upgrade. You know, so it's not just one, uh, but there's several. What's the collaboration been like with Scott throughout this entire process? I know we've asked you that before, but through this whole 13-week journey? Uh, we had good communication. You know, we, we had great dialogue and talking about the roster and the things that we need to do to try to upgrade it in the present. So uh, I think that really has been the difference, in my opinion, as we talk about, you know, uh, being on the same page, you know, moving forward uh, and understanding it's all about the team, not about me nor, nor himself. If you're kind of in this position where you're kind of like a restricted free agent, right? Where you're interviewing, but you also have the ability to potentially interview elsewhere. Um, how much does that kind of play into your your kind of attack of this offseason? I know you don't want to talk about the offseason, but just that's generally what the situation is. Yeah, um, we'll have to wait and see exactly what the future holds. You know, um, again, uh, it's a process that we have to go through. Uh, and you're right, there, there may be other things, but right now I'm just trying to stay focused and see exactly what comes. A lot of eyes, uh, because of the minority, um, the league's poor record with hiring minority coaches. Um, so a lot of eyes are on this situation because a lot of people feel like you've proven you deserve the shot or deserve the job. So where do you, where do you look, how do you look at that and view yourself uh, in playing a role in helping minority coaches moving forward? I, I hope I play a role uh, of helping all coaches and not just minority coaches. And uh, in the way I lead and the way, you know, my players play and the way we go about our day-to-day -day operation and, and doing it with respect, integrity, uh, all the things that you uh, equate to being a good coach. So um, I, I hope I'm more perceived as, as a good coach and not just a minority coach. Um, um, I don't really try to get into, again, things that I can't control about, you know, who they're going to hire. I just think, you know, um, you know, given the opportunity to be able to showcase your talent and then let the chips fall where they may. Have other coaches, have other teams asked to interview you? Uh, you know, again, I'm not going to, you know, go into any details right there uh, in regards to the future. Steve, if I can ask you just two quick things. One is, in that 13 weeks, do you have any regrets as to anything you did or the results that happened? Okay, you gonna want me to answer the first, want me to answer the first one? Okay, so I would I would say no, because as, as I look out here and I expand my vision, uh, and, and I see all of you guys, uh, let's just call it spade a spade, right? Uh, none of you guys expected us to be, even be in this situation. So to be able to take a one and four team and to be able to, you know, get to the doorstep of possibly winning this division and going to the playoffs, uh, I have no regrets whatsoever, you know. Um, and to, to create an identity, to, to breathe some life back into this, this football team and the respect uh, within this organization that we started to receive throughout the league uh, of the identity that we created. You know, we set franchise records uh, for uh, rushing and total yards. Uh, we went on the road uh, and won big football games that no one gave us a chance to win in Seattle. Uh, so, no, I don't have any regrets.
And given all that, the second part is, so when Mr. Tepper fired Matt Rule, he said, will Steve Wilkes have a shot at this job? And he said, if he does an incredible job, he will. Incredible was the word he used. So I just want to ask you, do you think you did an incredible job? I, I, I think that's, that's, you know, uh, someone's opinion of what they consider to be incredible, you know. Uh, what I consider to be incredible and the things that I do around the house, my wife doesn't see that see it that way, <laughs> you know. So uh, it just depends on how you perceive what's incredible. So uh, I'll let him determine that factor. We've heard from several players what it's meant having you as a head coach, which appear to, appears to go beyond the football side of it. You, Frankie Lubu mentioned you're like a father. We heard Brian Burns say today, I'll fight for Wilkes. What have they given you oh man they give me their all and how they work uh, how they go about their business uh, their great level of commitment the one thing I, I that I like and I told these guys when I first took over and I know it's a cliche that I talk about all the time but just act like a champion for me all right be accountable all right every day that you walk in this building man show me a great level of commitment and I know you guys can't see it right now. We're sitting here, we're one and four, we're one and five, but trust the process. Trust me in what I'm, what I'm trying to get done. And they, and they believed in that. And uh, I appreciate them for that. So uh, I never questioned, I told these guys this this past week, I never questioned how we went about our business each and every day. Those, these guys work hard every day, you know. And what I talked about is Excellent preparation. Now let's make sure this leads to game day execution. And that's what we have to do. And that's what we always talked about finishing. So, uh, you know, everybody talked about the game yesterday. You want to, you know, uh, criticize and point out different things, quarterback rating, you know, uh, uh, you know, we didn't couldn't pass the ball. Uh, defense got the first drive, you know, um, and they scored. Well, I can go back and pull those th certain things out I just talked about. Anybody has Aaron Rodgers' number, give him a call today and say, would he take this win over a quarterback rating? And I guarantee you, say he'll take the win. So let's quit worrying about the numbers. And until they change the outcome of what a win is, which I thought and still perceived to be having more points in the end as your opponent, that's what a win is, right? So other than that, you can't. it's not an ugly win. So uh, again, we're not gonna sit here and take uh, what I feel like those guys accomplished, no, no. They played their butts off yesterday. That game kind of symbolized what this entire season kind of was, right? Like it started off, you know, kind of from behind and then it kind of had a rocky start and then you guys ended up pulling it out at the end. I was just curious, have you been able to reflect on on this journey at all through that, maybe that experience of this last game? Well, yes and no. And I looked at it as, as I told those guys, it's like we have been to the point where we played three and a half great quarters. You've seen that a lot of times in games, uh, particularly going back with the, uh, the Tampa game. And this was just like totally opposite to where three and a half quarters, we really didn't perfect our craft and doing the things that we needed to do. But all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, we came together. And to me, that's what it's all about. You know, that element of finishing in all three phases. You know, we talked last week, many of you in this room, uh, about CJ and was he um, loafing on that one particular play, you know, and whatnot. But I, no one has yet to talk about when he missed the tackle yesterday, got up off the ground, all right, sprinting and tackled the guy and punched the ball out from behind and took three points off the board, okay? You know, that that's what we're talking about for is evolving. And, uh, man, no. It's just those, those guys fought the tails off yesterday. Hey, we'll do a couple more. Kind of piggybacking off of Deshaun's question, um, since you've been here, I've heard the phrase leader among men when describing you. What does that mean to you? What does that phrase mean to you? It is, it's hard for me to really determine uh, because you hear it uh, so many times and sometimes loosely, but uh, I, I try to tell people I'm a leader of people. Um, when you look at uh, this organization, because what people fail to realize, a head coach, he doesn't only, you know, inspire the team. You know, it's a whole organization. And you set the tone for uh, uh, 
how everybody in this building thinks. And I think within the last 13 weeks, you have seen the morale uh, in this organization go up, you know, and that starts with uh, the mentality that we create each and every day. So uh, leader of men, I don't know. I just consider myself a leader uh, in general. We don't get I would say in the moment and not think beyond I, I think is is I think it's very simple, man. And um, we had this this saying when I was here before: just be where your feet are. You know, uh, when I was coaching at Johnson C. Smith, um, I came up with a phrase: be big time where you are. And you talk to a lot of coaches, a lot of young coaches. You know, they want to evolve, they want to move up, and you get the same thing in corporate America. All right. Just take care of what's in front of you, you know? Be where your feet are, be big time here, all right? And then when you show yourself worthy and improve, hopefully opportunities will come. So I just stay in the moment because that's what I've always been taught to do. What does the rest of this week look like for you? Like, like presumably you're interviewing tomorrow, but then what about Wednesday? And it never fails. I told you guys this the other day, okay, all right? Joe always tries to come back and reword the question because he's trying to get me to say something. Hey, I'm staying in the moment, Joe. I'm staying in the moment. So we'll see exactly what happens. Uh, hopefully my wife and I will be able to get away for a little bit and, and spend some time. And uh, other than that, that's it. Coach, not Panther related, but J.J. Watt walked off yesterday and retired. Just your thoughts on him as a player and what he means to this league? Uh, you know, I, I didn't have the opportunity of coaching him, but I still consider him to be like a pillar uh, of the NFL. Just his his things that he does outside of football with his charities. Uh, you know, I, I put him in the frame of another guy, several guys that I've coached, but I'm just thinking about Arizona because I was out there, Larry Fitzgerald, you know, uh, those guys that are so – involved in their community and doing things beyond the game. You know, you look here at Thomas Davis. So uh, great player, uh, but he's going to definitely be uh, remembered just beyond his play on the field. First battle Hall of Famer for sure. We'll do Kelly and Mike. We talked about having the support of the players in the locker room. What's it been like? Um, have you felt the support in the community? Because there's a lot of people that support you here in Charlotte. You know, I don't, I don't get out much, um, but I do hear it um, from friends, from family members. Uh, wife and I did go out the other night, and, you know, of course, people come up to the table and express, um, you know, PSL owners, how appreciative they are. So it means a lot. All right. Everybody good? Thank you, Coach. Appreciate Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.